Okay. Come on. I find Mr. Hyman and you always have to sing it. You can't just say it. You must say, I find Mr. Hyman. I find it, man. <laughs> Born in Tata, raised in PE, a blower to be specific in PE. One of my earliest memories was a best friend I'm at the time, Ulanki. Ulanks, we jumped over to the church house. You know that there's a church most in Nenbani house, a big, and we had a friend there, so Ulanki went in, got the music, um, not legally, and it was cassette tapes at the time, lots of them. Went home and we started playing the cassette tapes. All kinds of rap, old rap music. Oh, Craig Mag. Word up, no rap, no crap, you bore me. Notorious B.I.G. To all the ladies in the place with style and grace. Bushwick Bill. See, most of my life I never had shit. Tupac. I was young, me and my mama had beef, 17 years old. Keep People we didn't even know. Uh, Heavy D and the boys. One. And from that long list of rappers, I chose two of my favorites. And that was Notorious B.I.G. and Craig Mack. And I was like, I'm keeping these two cassettes. Not from Houston, but I rap a lot. Pack the gap a lot. The flame's about to drop. Uh. Here comes the brand new flavor in your ear. Time for new flavor in your ear. I'm just kicking new flavor in your ear. Like a brand new flavor in your ear. My grandmother, Mom Tim, was a huge influence in, in my life because um, she was my guardian. And at the time, me and my mother were not seeing eye to eye. So I ran away from her house into my grandmother's house. And I was like, Mom, tell me, please. And then she was like, okay, on one condition, if you do the school thing, I'll let you stay. I said, deal. Yeah, education for me seemed to pop. I seemed to be doing well at school. At first I thought I was blessed, you know, I was like, oh Jesus, thank you, you I am Nondo Nondo, you know, one in a million. Later on in life I find out my dad was actually the same thing. You know, he just passed it down to me and I had the brains and now I passed it down to my son and now he has the brains. So I guess I wasn't special in that form or fashion. For me, the whole school thing became very easy after I was doing well. By the time I got to matric, I was being given forms to fill in. I was being told where to apply. Information was just coming to me. I didn't have to go dig for it. So I applied and every way I applied, they responded positively. Lucky, ne? I know. Every bursary I applied to responded positively. They said, yes, we want to sponsor you. And every school I applied to came back and said, yes, we're going to accept you. Vets accepted me. University of PE accepted me, University of Cape Town accepted me, and uh, I had options. In varsity, I started dibbling, dabbling into music. But it wasn't to make music to make it, you know? It was just because I was interested in it. When I first started making music, I did hip-hop music, rap music. Because remember those cassettes? I was very influenced and pushed in the direction of hip-hop rap music. So it's all I listened to, it's all I wanted to make. But I was also into gospel because Umam Tembu was from Etawin. So I would listen to gospel. I was also into R&B because, you know, I'm a romantic guy. You know? you know, I vibe with all for one, boys to men, baby, I love you. But rap spoke to me. So I did rap music. Hip hop is a way of life. You know, people, hip hop is how we express ourselves. We talk about who we are within the community. You know, what the things we do, what we like. Graduation came, happy days, happy days. But then they wanted me to come back for the third time to study some more. I said, no, I'm tired now. Yo, two degrees, is, is that not enough? Can I get a break? I said, ah, fine, go home, do whatever you need to do. I said, thank you, thank you, ma'am. And the people were Nelson Mandela Rose scholarship people that wanted me to go further. I said, early break, but it's sharp. So in that break, I met a rapper from Blau. That was the beginning of history. 
hip hop mm -hmm. originally is from the United States yes. of America, and True. that's how we know it. And people mostly do it in English. Yes. And why did you decide to do it in Sikosa, which has made you a little bit unique? Yeah, true, true. Well, I wanted to represent myself. I wanted to put myself on the table and say, this is me. So one of the first things you will know about me is that I am Kosa. Okay. So I wanted that to come through and I wanted to preserve my language. Yeah, when I met this rapper from a blower, I was all about making music now. I had even forgotten I graduated. And we were making music and he sold me to the idea of rapping in Kosa. I was not vibing with it at the time. But because of the way he was delivering his flow, I was like, hey, maybe this guy has something, eh? And then he said, try it, man, just try it. I was like, I will try it on one condition. If I apply effects on my voice, I'll do it. He said, okay, let's find something. So I found an effect, and it was a high pitch effect. And then I started rapping in Corsa with the high pitch. So then with the high pitch rapping in Corsa, I was like, mm, I need a name for this high pitch voice. Who can I say this is? Then I was like, you know, I'm already calling myself MZI, the engineer. Maybe this one can be the other half of my name, because it's Mzaifan, MZI Ifan. So I was like, okay, let this high pitched voice be Ifani and let me be me, MZI, Yebo. Then MZI Ifani becomes Ifani. So there's the English rapping guy and the Tosa rapping guy. Obviously the English rapping guy fell away. And this guy took over. The person that changed everything for me was the release of Bro Kids album, Heads and Tails. That was the beginning of a new era for me. When that album hit, I stood up and I said, no more this MZ Bull nonsense. I'm gonna be a fan now, and I'm gonna follow this guy's footsteps. Because he was doing it in Zulu, nicely, with flair, style, confidence. And I had to come in, I had to, man. Bro Kids set the path for me and I had to follow it. For the toss of each other. Scaling up bongy support, but says he give a back state till I'm a flowing man. It says, Oh, my river bank. I need a man of the match and hold a bigger check. Pandy figures crap as he fast as he shines. The scene, the underground scene, or the rap scene at the time was very underground, very conscious rap, very boom bab type. And I felt like what Bro Kid brought was taking that underground and putting some sparkles on it you know putting some modern things to make it look modern I mean, to make it look new millennium and i needed to do something similar or something of that nature i needed to create my own product i looked at it as if pro kid is microsoft bill gates i need to be apple steve jobs at what point in the music journey did you realize that you're different you're not the traditional rap or hip-hop artist um i did I didn't know I was different until I blew up. Mm. You know, I thought I was the same as everyone. Yeah. I mean, I was rapping, fucky lines, you yeah. know, <laughs> thinking this is what everyone does. Yeah. And then after Air We're Blue, I, just, I then realized when people kept telling me that, hey, for it, you are not the same. Yes. <laughs> yes, so now, I realize that this music thing is not popping. And a lot of people are in my ear telling me that, you know, you went to school, why are you wasting your time doing this? music thing for poor, dirty, or oh, rapper, I'm dagger. Why can't you just go to work? Just make money so you can buy me a fridge, Mdanam. Do something. So all that yip, yip, yip got to me and I, you know, gave in. And my girlfriend at the time, when when there's a CV, she uploaded it online and then they called me because the results are so like, <laughs> so they called me, yo, Mr. Boltina, are you kidding me? You're in the market. Come on, my man, come work for us. So I went to work for this other company, uh, Software. I was out there as a software developer, but I always had my headphones on. Grrr, headphones. What's up, my boy? What's up, my son? Coding with ProKid in my ear. So now I have money now. So now I can buy computers, I can buy mics, compressors, software, the whole works. And the idea at the time was for me to sit behind the desk and record these rappers, you know? Toss a rapper here, toss a rapper here, engineer them nice. But I wasn't winning with these guys. And I'll go pick up a guy. When I go pick up, pick him up, the next day he's not there or he's lazy. So I got frustrated and I decided to do it myself. I did it. And then 
after doing it, people hated it. Oh, they hated the iPhone. Every time I'd upload this thing or give it to someone on Facebook, they just hated it. So from that, the song called Olaita I started. <laughs> And then so when my song made it to Hype Magazine and then people started writing about my song on Facebook and then YFM picked it up and played it and people started commenting when YFM played it you could see Uban and they're cool you know I find it's growing now and it was exciting very exciting so for Ola Eta because it, it had the, this reception I thought well let me continue and shoot a video for this and take it to you know channel O, MTV base all these people shot the music video I liked it because I shot it I liked it because I edited it I liked it because I graded the video and then took the video to MTV base and they said I was heartbroken you know because I'm thinking how can these people reject me I mean, I've been good all my life. I was good at school. I'm good at work. I'm good at everything. And now when I start this music thing, they see me not being good. How? I was heartbroken. But I had to get up and do something else. <laughs> Yeah, so from the rejections of Wolaita, I met Stukzin Kaiwan, S2K Dotza. If you don't know who that is, it's pitch black afro yizolezo. <laughs> met him and I told him my story. You know, these people are rejecting me, my man. I even took Olaita to Metro FM. They said no. Oh, MTV based as well. And Stukzin was like, ah, oh, nah, I'm in Pincham. Yo, and gave me a long list of his rejections. I was like, man. He's like, what do I need to do? He's like, ah, Fanelo Four Stella. Fanelo Four Stella. I'm like, ah. I must force the so that I must turn this no to an A, when it like yeah, I'm pincham. So I wrote the song and I said, please feature. Disappeared. I said, fine, Stukzin. Uh, JR, please feature. Disappeared. I said, fine, I'll feature myself. So away. God bless away. I made away in 2008. Away only picked up in 2011. How many years is that? And I took away everywhere. We even went to Lesotho with this one time. I even performed at some of the events there. It just didn't go until one day it played on 5FM. How? I don't know. But from that play on 5FM, whoo! Dineo Ranaka picked it up on YFM. When she played it, it was all systems go. You know, my man, when it's like the 26th of the month, and you were paid the previous day and debit orders come click 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 it was like that you just kept radio station is playing click playing click metro click yfm click josie fm click yo i'm nandi baba i was a uh, social media star because of what happened when airway music video played on live and it trended and this was the first time this was happening for an underground artist to trend on twitter streets for a song and one of the things people were going on about was the uniqueness, just how different this guy looks, the way he delivers. So it was like a combo, a nice KFC combo that was delicious. So people vibed with it. And that was the beginning of a new stuff. <laughs> Sony came to me at a time when I was down. Money was going down. I was hijacked and I was getting no gigs. I had resigned from work, no money coming in, all the money coming out. So they came and they said, yo, 
here's an offer on the table my man we love your work we think you can make a great impact we've never seen this please join our boat i said uh well michael jackson was with sony chris brown is with sony i think i'll go with you guys yeah so remember as i was signing this was my first time ever signing this was my first time seeing a contract year music i had never seen any contract before year music and knew no one who was in that field or industry so Kumu, it was all brand new and i was there to learn for myself so after i signed i was in it like what happens here who does this what happens there what is that what is that so i was in it for the learning the first few months were all just learning still no money coming in just learning See, when, when Sony signed me, something very, I don't want to say strange, but almost strange is miraculous. -ish -ish. Because they said, listen, my man, these are the deals we are signing right now, 360 deals. But you, you can have any deal you want. So I said, what deals are there? There's licensing, there's recording, there's distribution, there's just choose one. And I felt like, which one doesn't hold me the most? You know, which one doesn't bind me the most? And the answer there was licensing, because with licensing, I'm giving you the license to use my stuff and when I'm done, I take it back. So I said, I'm gonna go with licensing. Then they said, okay, but when you go with licensing, we give you no money. But if they give you money, they still take their money back. So it's not money like they give you, give you money. Yeah, but we give you no money, we give you no support. So you kind of have to be the executive producer of this work and bring it to us already. I said, my man, I've been making music since way back. I'll deliver. So the first project I went to deliver was chocolate and vanilla. They sat on it. I said, guys, you just signed Toya Delays. Ask Toya Delays to please come over and record just a small piece. I'll do I find a feature in Toya Delays. Drop. They slept on it. I said, okay, fine. Let me take out my bomb. Shake. Took out the instrumental. Recorded, recorded, recorded. And I said, okay, fine, Sony. Send Toya Delays to PE to shoot with me. Because like Eko Kungo, they slept on it. I said, fine, fine, fine. Zakwe, you just signed Zakwe now. Fresh, fresh, fresh. Get me Zakwe for the video. They slept on it. So I used my last money on the credit card to shoot to EU, shake, went over budget, swiped the whole thing. Now I'm sitting with minus 40 something thousand on my credit card and the limit was minus 60K. So when I came back from a pie to a Sony, Joe's right here, I handed them the music video and the song same time. And I said, guys, if you sleep on this, it's your choice. But Mna, I'm going now to send this song to every radio station I know. So you can either help me or let me go. And I left. The next day, they called and say, Brr. okay, 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 hold on, I find. Don't do anything. We'll call you at 11. And Shake was out by 11. YFM was playing Shake by 11. The following week, it was top of the charts on YFM. Kicking out corner, dibi 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 di, corner. Remember that song? Kicked it out of the charts. Boom! Shake, shake. Mm, mm. Make it dangle. I said, Yeah, I told ya. I'm broke, but I'm famous. Poor, but I'm famous. So now with Shake popping everywhere, people started saying, you know, we would love to put you on the front cover of this magazine or write an article about you, but you need to give us an album. You can't with just one single or two singles. You need an album. You need an album, I find. I find an album. Okay, I'll give you the album. Remember, I don't have money. Now I have to produce a whole album. <clears throat> so I uh, came up with the title saying yes i don't have money now but i believe this thing will work i funny believes in me i believes in me and then it was just luck after luck after luck after luck i would meet someone at some event and then they would say i make beats and send me the beat i'll meet someone and then they say yo i can record you at my place come record i meet someone who says yo i can take good pictures if you pay me 500 bucks like i met all these people by coincidence and then we created this body of work, almost free of charge. And out it went. And when it went out, oh my god. Oh, you got Millie, Millie, you fool new friends to Millie, Millie. I'm trying to make a Millie double up. I'm just trying to double up. Millie just, yo, 
Millie killed everything, really, for me. Do I feel like Millie inspired Dr. Beleza? <laughs> Come on, now, that's obvious. That's obvious. But remember, though, at the time, Casper and I were very close. We we're not very close, but we were, you know, we were, we were vibing. So it's not a matter of, yo, you stole my song. No, no, no. no. It's a matter of we were, we were vibing. There's things he would say to me that would influence me. There was things that I would say that would influence him. So it was a, you know, it was a win-win thing. Why did you choose, why did you choose to just split yourself with, with Jesus? Because, you know, I understand my brand better than anyone else. That's what I felt like at the time. There's just um, a certain level of stardom that I just wasn't feeling like I reached as then. You know, I'm not the star and I don't want to feel like I'm the star. I just want to be a fan all the time. Dream Team uh, also reached out to me. I know, lucky guy, blessed guy is me, miracles. So they reached out on Twitter saying, yo, listen, we manage Kuli China. Would you like to vibe with us? Uh, what do you guys even do? I ah, come over for a meeting. So I took a taxi. Went to Renberg, sat down, the filo was there and started talking, talking, talking. I was like, yo, I like the way this guy is talking. You see, with this guy, if I can sit just behind him and let him talk for me, hey, I can win a lot of things, yeah. I said, Refilo, my man, let's try this thing. Oh, now, at that time, I was broke, bro. Not only broke, but in debt, broke. And I had 10,000 left to pay for rent. I know, expensive rent. Ne? And I had 10,000 left to pay for rent. And I was paying it that end. It was about, I think, around 27, 28. And I was paying it end of the month for the last time before I leave for PE. That's when I met Refuel, like at the end. And Refuel said, we as Dream Team are now vibing with iFine. By the first of that month, I had my first gig, 3,000 bucks. By the end of March, I had over 30K. By the end of that year, we made a milli. Double up. I'm just trying to double up. That's how hard Dream Team worked for us. All of us. Me, Kulichana. Yo. Yo, it was, it was dope. And Cabello from TKZ. Yo. And Cabello used to give me his gigs. Yo. <laughs> Yo, I remember that money to this day. Yo, Kabza, KB, Buga Two Shoes. Those Vodacom gigs. Oof. Big mind, very nice. Oh my goodness. Um, welcome to the biggest show in the land. And I'd like to thank my boyfriend who drives an Aston Martin. And I'd like to thank Top Billing. And for SABC One, Shem, for giving me a platform. Nice. Uh, Who is he talking about? <laughs> the word you are looking for is your copy. Moving on to bigger Yes, things. and then TV came. When TV came, I wasn't... Mm, I fought it. I didn't want to do the TV thing. But the producers of the show said, listen, my man, we were going, at the, we were going to somewhere and we were at the airport checking our stuff in and this guy was going crazy about this iPhone and we kept asking him who's this iPhone I was like oh you need to see iPhone yo iPhone oh nyanaka mom tem oh dope 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 so they went back and they started googling you know iPhone and then they saw me they watched my videos and they were like yo this guy is charismatic you know he's, he's out there he's we like him on screen let's get him for the new show that we are proposing for they proposed for the show they got the show and they came back and said iPhone Please, my man. I said, no, guys. Not me. Me, I'm a rapper. Presenting? No, 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 no. I don't do that. I write lyrics. You know? Bust rhymes. They're like, please, man, just come over. Just say, okay, stand on screen and say something about your song or whatever. So I sat like this, because this camera is here, and I spoke like, like the way I'm talking now. They said, perfect. We want you. I said, no, guys. No, guys. Says, Look at the offer. I think it was like 100K or something. I said, people, three gigs for me, I get this. I said, no, 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 no. Look at the shows we've done. Do you see who we've worked with here? This person, 
did this after our show. This person, this happened to them after our show. This person, this happened. I said, okay, I hear you now. So you mean if I do this show, it's possible I could win the sum? Obvious, because the whole country knows you. Sign me in. Plus, don't forget the 100K. Sap, sap, sap. I did the thing, and little did I know that 3 million South Africans would tune in to watch that stuff. I had no clue. And as soon as that happened, I finally became like a brand name. Because I go 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 by and as, oh, my God, oh, Daba, oh, auntie. Everyone knew who I finally was. And then the summer came with Stumble Storm. Can you imagine how much money that was? Woo! <clears throat> double up. I'm just trying to double up. When I was making this album, I'll be honest with you, when I was making this album, I had one dream. That dream was to sell gold on the first day. So every night before I would sleep, my man, like 3 a.m., 4 a.m., I would ask myself, what would a gold artist be doing right now? Would they be sleeping or would they be thinking of the next idea that they need to go back in studio and put down? My second album, which was the second quadrant, I wanted to go even bigger because the first quadrant went from zero, there's nothing, no one knows who I funny is, to boom, first quadrant, the whole country knows who I funny is. So I wanted the second quadrant to be now on a global scale, you know? The whole country knows, but now even people outside the country know who I funny is. So that was the idea with the second quadrant, to do what first quadrant did, but bigger. Millie, there's a speed to beat, triple long days, cause I'm trying to make a million. Guys, please go out there to Music and pre-order my album or go to iTunes. It's coming out. It's blazing. It's coming out. I find it. Mr. Haimani, we're going to sell gold on the first day. Please support. I need it. Peace! Yeah, aka even accused Reds of buying my albums. Not true. Reds did not buy my albums. Who Reds? Reds had a... where they would go and do festivals from city to city. And a lot of artists were there, not just me. Ricky Rick was there, Major Leagues were there, I was there. All kinds of artists were there. Um, I think it was called Dream Team, the, the boys from Durban, they would come to these festivals. And sometimes we would plan them. Um, and sometimes I would be, they would call me in the meeting when we we're planning, you know, because every time we went, I would kill those shows. Because <laughs> I was that guy. Always. So it was around the Reds Carnival, our relationship. But the buying of the CDs, no. Reds did not buy those CDs, my man. I was gonna sell those CDs to all kinds of people, including Reds at some point. But that was deaded by yours truly, Akka. Yeah, I was overwhelmed by all that backlash, you know? And it was heartbreaking to see some people that I thought were on my side, jumping over to AKA side. And it was too much for me to bear. So I took a step back. So I left Dream Team at the time when I was leaving everything. I was leaving Sony, I was leaving Dream Team, I was leaving music. Because after making that melee, I felt like, yeah, that's what I came here for. So now, Ila Paso, why you want me to wake up in the morning now? To do what? Make another melee? No. I wanted this melee. No, you have to make more me. No, no, no. The one I wanted is here. So, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye, ne? No, let's make. Uh uh. Nancy, I'm a meal. Bye bye. So I left. I was leaving everything to focus on myself. Because um, besides being a musician, besides being an engineer, I'm a human being who is curious about life. And I always felt like I need to give myself time to answer myself these questions, you know? And I had been asking a lot of questions like Who is God? Is there a God? How did we get here? What is time? What is space? What is space time? Why are we here? Who are we? See, I had all these questions in my mind that I had to give myself time to explore. And making music does not give me time to explore. Performing in gigs does not give me time to explore. So making money wasn't, wasn't the thing after I made it. So after I cut everything, I gave myself time to explore these questions. And one month turned to one year, and one year turned to two years, two years turned to four years. So now, I have a chunk of four and a half years. Me time. I found everything I was looking for in this four and a half years. 
Same way, when I went into music, I said I want the milli and I got the milli and more, but I got the milli. So with this time I wanted to go get myself, I got myself and more, but I got myself. <laughs> Hey, man, is this a dude? Hey, I'm not